today we're going to talk about population distribution. Population distribution has to deal with organisms and where they are in a certain location, most generally an ecosystem. This is a little different than population density. Population density has to do with how many organisms are in an area. This is where organisms and how they are located within an area. So there's different types of populations and how they are arranged. You see some animals in flocks. Here there's a flock of ostriches hanging out together. You see some animals in herds. This picture shows a herd of horses grazing on a field. Some organisms tend to live in pairs. These swans here are together in a lake. And there are some individuals in a population that prefer to live by themselves as an individual. In the animal kingdom, there are rarely any few true individuals because usually animals will look to find a mate during mating season. But individual kind of goes for the majority of their time they spend by themselves. There's also populations that gather around resources and cluster together. This is a picture of an African waterhole where you see many different populations together, giraffes, wildebeest, gazelles, lions, clustered around this resource of water. Now population distribution occurs in three different types. On the left you see an example of clumped population distribution and you see the little red dots kind of together in a group. In the middle you see red dots just dispersed throughout that square in no particular order. And that's random distribution. And then on the right, you see the red dots, very uniform distribution, same distance apart, very equal, and that's uniform population. So let's talk a little bit about these three different types. Let's talk about clumped distribution. Uh, there's some advantages to being in a clumped distribution for your population. If you are a prey animal, there is protection from predators when you're clumped. Uh, this is best seen by a school of fish. Think about all these small little fish hundreds of them swimming together in one big group and a shark comes wanting to eat one and he can't focus on which one to eat. So clumping helps avoid the predation. Clumping also has more animals around to kind of keep an eye out. So one animal can be grazing, one can be watching, one can be watching another side. There's, if you're a prey animal, there's advantages to clumping because of shared hunting. So this is a picture of a lion pride, and as you notice, they're all kind of gazing in the same direction. If you have a group of animals, then you can share responsibilities for gathering food. You can also share responsibilities for raising your young. There's an advantage of having females and males in the same group clumped together because mating season is a lot easier. And then it also helps for resources like we previously stated around watering holes or food sources. Random distribution is a little different. There's no really purpose or reason for the organisms to interact. You see random dis distribution most commonly in plants. Here's a picture of a forest scene and it, it just looks jumbled, right? There's just no reason as to why did the tree grow here and then it's right next to like five ferns and then there's more trees. So there's kind of an isolation from competition. Even though it looks cluttered, you have trees evenly spaced out. You have ferns kind of here and there where their seeds drop. So it's most common in plants because of that reason. If you think about random distribution for animals, you're gonna have that most generally with an individual lifestyle. So think of a bear by himself foraging in the forest. He's not gonna have a lot of competition from other bear because he kind of has his area and his little habitat where he goes. But that could be kind of a lonely existence, don't you think? Uniform distribution is when there's a very distinct pattern. Here we can see this orchard vineyard of um, rows of grapes. And so these are aligned for a specific reason so that harvesting happens in between them and you can put a tractor in between those rows. In the animal life, you see a lot of uniform distribution when animals are defending a resource, preferably like a shoreline. You see a lot of birds protect nesting areas this way. So what you'll end up seeing from an aerial photo is a uniform sort of layout of that coastline. 
birds will end up being just far enough away with their nest that the other bird can't quite touch them, but they're all packed in there, so there's thousands and millions of birds on a shoreline. You see this with sea lions as well. They're all kind of sprawled out in their own specific little area. With uh, territorial birds, you have this sort of uniform distribution. They tend to have particular hunting areas, and so you'll see one bird for so many square miles, another bird for so many square miles, and then that way they have these boundaries kind of marked out, and it's easy for them to patrol their area. Which population distribution do you think you'd want to live in?